welcome to a new very exciting episode at least for me because I get to unbox finally my Heisingfeld professional pedals. I already took it out of the shipping box um, I hope you don't mind but I didn't peek inside yet so let's take a look I know I said I didn't have time to like do this, you know, but then it got just kind of ridiculous. At some point I just said, I'm going to make time because I can't be paying so much for this and not even taking a look at it. So yeah, if you like those people, you know, those of you who are interested in those paddles probably have seen the review before. So. I'm not gonna go through all the details that you have seen already on the other videos because basically, yeah, you just get a welcome card. It's actually personally signed. So that's pretty nice. Um, there's a the package content and a 50 euro coupon, which is actually, that's actually pretty nice because I do believe that it's gonna come in handy since they are working on some stuff like, um, I can't show you the coupon because then you'll see my code, bitches, and then you'll use it. I know you guys. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, kind of not. <laughs> there are a working on a sequential shifter that is supposed to come out probably this year. So, you know, I may use that coupon. Or maybe they'll release some $3,000 paddle scent. I may be hooked or some shit, I don't know. So those are the, just like a, just regular A to B. Uh, USB cable, which is nice to have those always. They send you all the all the tools that you need. That's actually pretty neat because apparently some companies don't even do that. And lots of bubble wrap. So yeah, that's guys the new package. Um, as you have seen in the in the previous video. Um, for the other pedals, like for the for the older generation, for the predecessor of the professional pedals, they came individually like boxed in a much bigger box, and I, I think it's it's sufficient this way, although it's not you know packed solely one by one, but they seem to be very securely packed, and yeah, Jesus Christ, they do look nice. They actually do look much nicer than what I expected from the pictures because I feel like on the pictures it kind of looked unfinished. I don't know. It. I, I think it's just me. I think it's really, I think it really is just me because a lot of people actually say that they look really nice. Um, but for some reason to me, you know, there are other pedals out there that look kind of better, I think. But again, that's just taste and preference, you know. So what else do we got here? Oh, right, that's the that's the new module, like the connectors. This is custom made for Heisingfeld. Um, HE SIM pedals, it's actually saying that on the board. And you have now the RJ plugs. So this is the new, this is the new deal about the new pedals, like, the, the new version as you can see here you have now the RJ connectors and you don't need to fiddle around with the you know the screws and the cables individually because I, I yeah that that was kind of a turn off you know on the on the previous models and I do like that they have it now on those plugs where you can just plug it in and from what I've seen or heard or read um, it doesn't actually even matter where you connect those two, like uh, in which order. I hope I'm gi not giving you guys any wrong information here, but yeah, I think it, it doesn't actually matter where, how you connect them. So basically the USB plug goes in here and then the three pedals go up in front. And I'm actually thinking that those cables may be a little too short to be completely honest here. I mean, let's take a look. This is supposed to be the gas pedal. This is the clutch and the brake. And it, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> unless they are all like individually long. Okay, they are different in length. And here is some 
do-it-yourself protection. Pretty heavy too. But yeah, definitely, definitely solid. I mean, it looks good. As said, like I'm, I'm actually surprised it looks better than what I expected. So all right, you have different lengths and cables here, but in a in a fairly weird manner. Like I would love to have those a little longer, to be honest, because since my rig is like moving all the parts. I would rather have this separately to not move at all and rather have those cables running down and just plug those in somewhere on you know the wall or something not directly on my rig plus like I have all the transducers you know this all the shakiness I mean I'm sure it will not affect this at all but you know just to be sure I don't know, maybe I'm just trying to find something, you know, to complain about, but they do look very nice. And I'm, I'm very curious to see how this clutch will actually perform. See, and this is the, exactly the moment where my, where my uh, recording would be interrupted. So give me a second. All right, so back to the topic. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is definitely not possible to test them really before mounting them. Jesus, that's really hard. Wow. Wow. Okay, and it's the... God damn it. So this part goes in very fairly easily. It's basically like simulating touching the discs of the brakes, but then to continue braking, you actually need to break your arm first before you do that. And that's the gas pedal. All three of them actually feel really nice. Really nice. I mean, I'm looking forward to, you know, this is why I ordered those pedals for the adjustment as you some of you have noticed that I've been you know first I've been thinking of upgrading my club sport v2 pedals to the DSD pedals and then while I was already like sold on the DSD pedals because I really like the looks of it I obviously trust you know Derek Spears products very much and love them dearly uh, but I started looking into just trying to find some reviews and some people commented that, you know, that the clutch kind of doesn't feel like anything particular. It's just, it's, it's very, you know, simple movement up, down, up, down. That's it. So I don't know. I love my clutch. I don't use it much, but when I use it, I want it to feel right. Sean, um, Sean Cole, um, as, at some point said, um, there are two different types of, uh, sim people there is sim drivers and there are sim racers and the difference was that sim racers count for every second and want to you know improve on every millisecond um, and sim drivers care for every ounce of immersion so obviously I'm a sim driver not a sim racer because if anyone has seen me drive <laughs> one of those sims I am just not that good and I'm sorry I don't really care because it's it would be nice to win don't get me wrong but I am definitely not deserving to win because I don't practice enough it's as simple as that I have nice equipment and I care for immersion because that's the most important goal for me but obviously I don't practice enough I don't attend races enough and most of the time when I have time available I build my system to that point where I want it to be. So, with that said, is well, I spent 750 on those three pedals. Is it a good deal? Yes, it is absolutely a good deal. But I also remember saying that I would never buy <laughs> pedals 
at this kind of a price point. So back then I was talking about ARC uh, spending like certain hundred on those pedals. But um, yeah, this is somewhere in between. However, even even that was too much for me about a year ago. And, it, and you know, for me, it's more important to have the immersiveness, to make it feel real. And obviously I'm not gonna go any faster. And see like, that's the thing with going faster and having better gear. It's, it's a paradox. It's a, you know, if you take a look at the, the, the racing champions of iRacing, the, the winning uh, champions, you know, um, in the worldwide championship of iRacing, all the aliens or most of the aliens use a G27 wheel with bare stock, you know, just set up and you know, it's not gonna matter to them. And of course you could say, well, um, if they would upgrade their gear from a G27 to, I don't know, something way better than they would perform even better than what they are already. Yeah, it's a fair comment, but it's also fair to say that if they already won the World Wide Championship, then they probably don't give a fuck because they already won it with the G27. Why would he care to go even faster than that and spending a couple of grand? So, I don't know. I have, I, have, I have very strong opinions on, you know, spending money on gear and knowing what it is for. Is it a good deal? Yes, it's a good deal because it's 750 and not 1300 or 1500 or 1600 for a set of pedals. But then again, you know, it's hard to justify spendings because Simply because I know friends, like friend of mine, <laughs> one particular friend of mine has a car that was less than this set of pedals. He paid 500 for his BMW. Oh, it's old as shit, but it still works. It still drives and it's an entire car. So, you know, go figure. It's hard to say whether or not you should buy this kind of pedals. I bought them. I am already satisfied because I know that they will please me just in the sense of immersion. If they feel real and if they perform better, I am all happy. Is it necessary? No. That's that's the bottom line. That's my opinion on, on the price point of these pedals. But overall, if you compare it to other sim pedals in that price point, I think those are the best. I'm sorry for saying this because I you know, as I said, I was very sad on buying the DSD pedals because I love and appreciate the service and the company that Derek Spears is offering. Um, I have quite a few things from Derek Spears and I enjoy them very much and I love his service. Then again, HE has very good service as well because uh, if, you, if you look through the forums, um, sim racing forums, no matter where you look at, those guys are all over the place and they answer questions and they always reply and respond and um, they even offer if you want to buy this set of pedals but you're not sure whether or not you would need maybe like better performance and you're maybe looking at the ultimate pedals which is all which is something that I was also like I was considering buying the ultimate pedals because essentially I was willing to spend over a grand on pedals because I thought you know what if I'm gonna buy this, I, I wanna buy this once. I don't wanna do this all over again in like a year or so. So I was willing to invest even more and I called him up and I was like, well, I'm not really sure whether or not I should buy the Ultimates or the Pros. And they said, well, to be honest with you, 90% of the people are gonna be satisfied with the Pro Edition. The Ultimates are for professional drivers, like real racing teams that are trying to simulate a Formula car, for example. But, they like this is what I'm, I'm telling you the story because i'm trying to make the point with the service they offered to test this out and if i don't like it i can send it back to them within a few weeks and exchange them for the ultimate pedals obviously paying the difference but you know this is high-end gear if i am allowed to mount this, scratch this, use and abuse this and send it in anyway to change for another set, that's considered pretty good service in my book. I don't know. So yeah, 
I think those companies are very comparable, very, com you know, it's, it's good service either way. It's good products either way. I'm sure that a lot of people that bought the DSD pallets and those are actually still sold out. I think he's shipping out the fourth batch now or the fifth, I don't know. But it's, when I was buying, I was, I was gonna buy the third batch and I was definitely already sold out like instantly. So I'm not too worried about, you know, saying the things that I'm saying, um, but I'm saying them because I'm not a fanboy of anything. I try not to be a fanboy of anything. Like I will mention the, the, the stuff that I like and I will also mention the stuff that I don't like. And there, there are more cons to this. Like I have some cons that I'll mention you. Um, however, comparing it with the DSD pals, which was the same price point and which was the primary choice for me at first, um, problem was with the DSD pedals, first the functionality of the clutch and the gas, that they're not the same like kind of, you know, Im uh, immersive feeling, but also that you cannot adjust them to your liking or not as much. You can adjust some of the stuff, but you cannot adjust as much as you can do with the HE professionals here. Um, now, why is that so important? Why would you need to adjust pedals that much? I mean, if you, um, like, if I'm saying that I don't care about, like, every millisecond of my race time, why do I bother with even adjusting pedals? Why, why don't I just take the Derek Spears pedals and be happy with them? Well, I'll tell you why adjustability for me is so important. And obviously, it's, again, it's more for immersive and more for comfort than for, you know, shaving off milliseconds of my racing time. Problem is, and I cannot demount my V2s yet, it's pretty complicated, but if you take off the Fanatec Club Sport pedals, you will see that they are much narrower than what I would place those pedals when I mount them. Because the Fanatec pedals would pretty much, well, not just like the somewhat around this position, would be the Fanatex. Somewhere to run. Yeah, I think more or less like this. I, I could measure it exactly for you, but bottom line is that for me, these two pedals are set a little bit um, to, to wrong because it's, I don't know how to show this to you. The thing is like, see, here is my problem and Again, this is just my opinion. You may have a different one. All rigs are designed that way that you have your pedals obviously in the center, in the middle, in front of you. Now, when you place those pedals in the middle, right in front of you, they end up at the exact same position as you are sitting. However, this makes it the gas pedal being way closer to the center than I would like it to have. And on my rig and on most of the rigs for that matter, you cannot just go, um, I'm gonna have it like here. I do obviously use my right foot for the gas and the brake, most of the time at least, sometimes the left foot. However, for heel and toe, for me, picture that this is my leg, right? So if I have it in the center of me, the pedals, it is for me very uncomfortable to press my leg against the gas pedal here with my heel because I am kind of moving in the um, not natural position of my leg. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like instead of having my leg like this going towards the center, I would rather have my leg here where it belongs. And I have a feeling that in my car, it's the same way. My pedals are here. Um, the clutch is a little bit more left. They have to be centered. Um, plus, it's it's just easier to uh, to do it. Either way, if it's more uh, like comfortable or not, it's always easier to have the leg in a more natural position. And this is also kind of important because I want this pedal to be a little bit further behind because this here, the brake pedal, 
this is what it does with, with um, in the real car too. If you press it just a little bit, it just touches the disc of the brakes, like the the, the discs, um, the disc brakes. Basically, you just touch it, and then you need to firmly press to actually start braking. And this is why in 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 the review of Sim Racing Garage, he also placed that pedal um, just the same way when those two would align. So see like this. I don't know if you guys can see that from that angle. I see. Jesus, I hate the DSLR to be honest. So yeah, uh, but I'll I'll get around to it. I I hope I'm in focus this time. Jesus. Anyway, so adjustability, as said, is very important. And one more up uh, side of this pedals, one more pro, uh, and why it's better than the DSD is because you can mount them actually upside down. And that's something that you cannot do. Like you can do that with pretty much all the pedals. You can mount all the pedals upside down, but it's not gonna, you know, <laughs> it's not gonna work properly. Plus you cannot adjust the angle. And with those here, you can. You can adjust the travel, the angle, the, 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 the force, everything can be adjusted. So this is a major pro why I chose those pedals. I do like the DSD pedals more for the looks or, um, you know, a lot of uh, the different things like it's I'll get to this later but bottom line is I am happy with those pedals either way I am sure they work fine um, I will test it out as soon as I get to that uh, unfortunately that won't be yeah anytime too soon it's not gonna be this week but yeah those are my thoughts on the pros on the cons list and I know that in uh, Sim Racing Garage the guy said well the cons list is the price. I beg to differ. There, there are some other cons and uh, let me get to this right here. Um, one of the major reasons why I don't have those pedals mounted yet is because it's an unfinished product. And this is kind of like, I'm having the same opinion all over as with the ARC handbrake. It's very expensive. Well, not, don't get me wrong, not the value, but like in terms of like just paying actual euros for that, it's a lot of money. I'm not saying it's not worth it, but it's a lot of money. And for that money, that product to me as a customer is unfinished. Why? Because I needed to buy this here, the mounting plate for these pedals. And I actually had to buy two of those because they're 2.5 millimeter thick. And that's already pretty thick. It's, it's pretty heavy, very durable, but I'm still thinking that it may flex because I need to apply maximum of 60 kilograms on the uh, brake if I'm gonna adjust the maximum. And this may cause the plates to flex and that, that, that's something that I definitely do not want, pardon me. So, well, what's the big deal with the plate? The big deal is that I live in the city center of Vienna. I have a job, obviously, that makes me work to afford things like that. All right, in city center, there are shops for clothes, there are bars, there are, I don't know, supermarkets, there's everything except for something that sells shit like that. I cannot just go on the main shopping street and buy a piece of metal to my liking. I have to order it um, outside of the city center, I have to drive there, I have to pick this up, I have to measure everything. And that is uh, driving people like me definitely nuts because I have better things to do than to try and finish a product for that I paid already good money. Now I understand that uh, some people have do-it-yourself rigs with the 20 by 20 or 30 by 30 panels or, um, as per se uh, Sim Racing Garage, he mounted them on the Bosch panels which is all fine and I congratulate you guys if you have that. But if you don't, you're screwed and you will need a plate. All right, okay, I got the plate, not a biggie. 
But now I'm losing time. I have to mount everything. I have to drill everything. Plus this plate here cost me 49 euros. Um, because I had to buy two, it's 25 per piece. So it's, uh, they, they didn't have it in the correct thickness. Plus I needed to buy um, a, a drill bit because I don't have like a, a, a drill piece that will go through like this kind of stuff. Most likely not. Plus I need to buy like some bolts. Plus I need to buy like this. And all of this in total was like, uh, and I'm pretty sure this is not it. I'm pretty sure that I will need other things to complete this setup. Now, all in all, we have here 58, 58 something. So now can someone tell me why is it that a company that obviously works with CNC machines and has tons of metal, which they get at cheaper prices, why do they not offer a mounting plate? I mean, hello, is, is that just like, am I the only one to think that this is weird? Niels, if you're watching, guys, offer a plate. I mean, come on, you have that stuff laying around in your company, I'm sure, and you can get it cheaper and you don't have to include it, make it as an option. I'll be happy to buy it. And plus, um, I can, well, I don't know if, I, if I'll be willing to, but guys, you can trust me on that. If I start drilling this plate, you can rest assured that I will misdrill and miscalculate and have to readjust those drill points and the pedals and the way I want them to be probably uh, three, four times. And by that time when I complete this build, I'll be so pissed. I'll be so pissed that I even have to deal with this after paying 700 for those. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like it's, this is why, um, I don't know, ARC pedals are so much more expensive. But then again, it's a complete build. You can move the pedals and you can adjust them every way you want, but they are mounted and they are finished. All you need to do is put like four screws on them and I'm pretty sure they come with it. Those things, they did not come with screws. Nope, no screws. I think this is six millimeter. They could have probably, you know, given some screws, six millimeters. As said, you know, you could complain, you could not complain. I choose to complain because, uh, you know, I'm not sim racing garage. Like, did you see his videos? He has like a whole um, garage full of stuff and he has all the wrenches and all the screws and all the stuff that he needs. Well, guess what? I don't. I have to go and buy that stuff. And I'm not sure that this will work. I have some screws here. I have some, you know, what do you call that? Some spacers or whatnot or washers. I'm not really sure if this is, well, if this is gonna work out. So anyway, huge con, huge con. So my setup most likely is gonna look somewhat like more or less this is not more or less like this so this is going to be definitely all the way on the left side this is going to be more or less centered but still going over the center and this is all the way to the right. And now that I'm actually looking at it, this plate may be not wide enough for what I want it. Is it my fault? Yes. Uh, would I have to deal with this if they would include a nice big board that you could, you know, slide the pedals back and forth? No, you know? So things like that, it's just, you know, now I have to worry about that stuff. And I don't know why. I really don't know why. Also, I would love to mount those pedals upside down. I really would. But even if I'm willing to invest the time of building this, I wouldn't know where to start. I would have to get like those Bosch aluminum panels and build like a a box or something with rails and with a lot of you know just um, uh, panels to for, for it not to flex and then find a way to mount them 
to my rig. And I understand why don't they sell an inversion kit or something or something where you can mount it or like even on those 20 by 20 or 30 by 30 panels that most of the do-it-yourself um, rigs have then they could um, sell those easily to the people that they need them and people like me could you know just use the box and then mount the box somehow now I have to figure it out how like I'm not, now basically I'm not gonna mount them upside down <coughs> because well because I'm too retarded for this they make like all the effort now on improving like the RG connectors so you don't have to uh, worry about this and this would definitely piss me off like if I would have to like screw in every individual cable I would feel like I bought like a do-it-yourself kit for you know 750 so yeah those are my two cents on the issues of those pedals and however keep in mind that I'm still in love with those and I'm pretty sure I will um, be happy with them for a very very long time they look very durable they, they it's the build quality is really fantastic I mean you can't you can't say much about this it's one thing I would love to have and I'm thinking about it is maybe I will keep the uh, the Tilton style pads from the uh, from Derek Spears and try to mount them on here because I really like the curve um, it's very ergonomic it's it makes the fo foot just feel much better obviously you'll have to uh, drive with shoes using those kind of pedals and that's also something that I want to mention I already put like, my shoes that I'm racing with usually in like I used to race with those shoes on the real racetrack like in drifting um, and those shoes are actually called Drift Cats. Um, they're produced by Puma. Well, produced by Puma. They're, they're produced by <laughs> five-year-olds in uh, China sitting somewhere on a curve of the street and like <laughs> gluing those together for 10 cents an hour. But yeah, uh, Puma sells those. And the thing is, um, they're not the cheapest, but they are affordable and you can use them as like regular shoes or for driving, you know, in, in, in a real car. And it makes it comfortable because two things. It's much slimmer than a regular shoe, like compared to a sport shoe or something. It's a lot slimmer, especially when you put it on, this like wraps around your foot and just gives you much more space when you use um, like left foot braking. And then the other thing is that it has this curve here. I hope you guys can see that. I, did I mention I hate my cam? <clears throat> I love it, but I hate it. So this here has a curve and when you rest your foot, it just goes in a perfect ergonomic, you know, kind of way to, um, to adjust your, you know, balance on the, on the gas pedal or on the brake or whatever. So that makes it uh, very comfortable. And those are, yeah, I said, I, I think I paid them, I think I paid like some, somewhere around 70. They, they may have been on sale, but bottom line is that it's not, it's not like 250 or 300 as, as if it would be with like real racing shoes. Like if you go for, I don't know, some Sparco shoes. Um, you, biggest problem or biggest issue is like with racing equipment, you have to uh, go to a tuner shop. And I don't know where you all like watch this or where you all from. Um, here again, there is no such thing. Like I would have to buy them online. That's the best I could do um, in Vienna or drive outside of Vienna to like a professional motorsports equipment store. Then I could buy some kind of shoes that would, you know, match those. And with the Puma shoes, you just go to a regular Puma store and buy some Puma shoes. So also I want to mention that I installed now a five point harness seat belt, mainly because I already had it, but I never wanted to install it just for the kicks of it and uh, there were, there's always like trolls coming to the channel and like why are you using gloves for your uh, sim gear? Bitch, because my wheel is Alcantara and my sim rig costs more than my car and I have a nice car so <laughs> yeah for the same kind of purpose and avoiding of such comments I never used my uh, seat belts that I had but um, finally, I 
did install them now because I feel like it's appropriate to start using it when applying the full force of those brakes here because it's at 60 kilograms at maxed out and I don't know how people use the ultimates with 130 kilograms of force but I feel like this may already be enough to elevate me from the seat because of the nature of the GS4 seat it has a very steep angle uh, when applying the brakes completely I may actually elevate from the seat so yeah you'll be seeing this um, a lot soon enough and uh, another cool gadget which I added to my rig is this here and I'll get to this um, soon you know how we like need some drinks when we race longer I mainly like you guys <laughs> my races uh, never go or usually don't go longer than like 45 minutes but um, I know some of you out there drive like the two-hour uh, competitions and at least some of you have like some kind of drinks somewhere near the rig and you always worry about spilling it and I was looking at like some cups to you know like with long straws or like with um, seal and it's always kind of a pain like I never was really satisfied with the solutions given so I finally bought this here and this is um, a drink system um, mainly known like in real motorsports and like in rally where they have this straw hanging out from the back of the seat and this thing here is actually fairly reasonably priced um, it was like 20 euros something like that um, I can I can I can give you guys the link of Amazon but yeah I bought it on Amazon and it's somewhere around I don't know 20 maybe 30 uh, but I think it's around 20 euros you can fill this up with drinks mainly water I would recommend definitely using water not like any um, sugary stuff but uh, yeah the cool thing about this is that first of all you have a long like drink mechanism here you bite into this and you can get some water out of it and it does not spill the water when not in use and you can use that as a kind of a backpack that's like mainly I guess what it's used for when you I don't know riding a bicycle or something but you can versatile this uh, the use of this um, backpack because for once you can put this on a chair so on the back of your chair and leave, leave this hanging over your shoulder somewhere like at around this position well may maybe not like this exactly but yeah once it's mounted it will be you know just hanging there and the way I use it and the GS4 seat is that it has here these holders and they go exactly through the seat and I can um, directly attach them to the GS4 seat in the back so I'm not actually sitting on this this is mounted in the back of my seat and I'm not pressing on the water or anything and this piece is uh, this is also why I mentioned the belts now that I have the belts I can fix that with the belt and it's always in reach uh, for me to drink and it's as I said it's maybe over exaggerated but I think for the money that it costs it's really not a bad deal and I think it's you know just very comforting to know that you cannot ruin the system I don't know I feel like a little bit you know nerdy having this but it does I mean it does make sense you gotta admit it's you know it's 20 bucks and it's a perfect solution so yeah all good value speaking of value <laughs> did you uh, guys watch uh, fan attack lately <laughs> uh, I want some of the stuff that they're smoking <laughs> it's you know if I would ever be a fanboy of something I would put I would pick fan attack um, I always say like I don't want to be a fanboy of anything and I'm not but um, yeah it's it's getting harder and harder to defend fan attack I mean Jesus they I don't know what to say like those rims that they've been releasing <laughs> each week uh, 350 euros that that classic rim 
that looks like ass is 350 euros. It doesn't have a single button on it, um, no licensing, not, nothing. Like if it would have a Ferrari badge on it or something, I would be like, eh, okay, I, I guess, I guess. <laughs> you know, the fuck is wrong with them? It was like, it's, I always, I always liked Fanatec and, and I still do, don't get me wrong, but <clears throat> the prices that they, I don't know if they just want to scare us all and then when it's released, like make it half price or something to sell it better. But the way this is announcing right now, it's just ridiculous. It's, it's, it's borderline bullshit. And that's, that's the thing with Fanatec. It's, um, I have to be, okay, here's an important message for, um, all the people out there that are looking at buying gear and upgrading gear and getting into sim racing. Here's a tip for you that I personally feel that I would pay a lot of money for this knowledge if someone would have given this to me about a year ago or a year and a half ago. Once you find yourself looking at Fanatec Club Sport gear and you find yourself actually be willing to spend that money. And this has nothing to do with Fanatec. It has something to do with your um, mind and just approach to, you know, gear and money and value. Remember that once you cross the line of buying Club Sport Series, the world opens up a gate to hell. <laughs> Not because the products are not good. It has nothing to do with Fanatec, as I said. I'm just saying that once you're willing to spend a four-digit number and Fanatec Club Sport Series, once you get it all, like the pedals, the wheel, the, the rim, uh, the wheelbase and the shifter, you will be above a grand. Once you're willing to spend that kind of money, it opens up the gate to hell because you will be looking at, you know, money will not matter once you cross that line because once you spend four digits it makes it so much easier to look at stuff in a whole different way so this is my tip of the year to all of you because i remember that 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 you know that point that barrier when for me stuff was acceptable and unacceptable and before buying club sport series I remember that money kind of mattered to me. Like sim gear was way out of proportion, way out of line, way out of reality, way out of reach. But then at some point I spent the money on the club sport series. And for some reason, something changed in my mind. It made me think, oh, okay, well, I already bought that. Why not buy this? And maybe, well, this and... Um, you know, it just starts to affect your mind by, you know, proportions do not exist at this level anymore. So because once you spend a grant, um, it will be much easier to look something, uh, to look at something else that costs 1500 or two grand. Because before you spend that grant, you think of spending money the way <coughs> normal people should think like oh jesus christ like it's 300 euros that's a lot for you know simulation or for my hobby that's that's a lot of money but once you spend a grant and something else that attracts you or may find your interest costs only like 500 then you start all of a sudden thinking in a different way that's that's something that happened to me i don't know if it applies to all the people but <clears throat> i re like it made me think of this because when i you know, when I made the, the comparison between the pedals and I remembered how I was saying that I would never spend that kind of money on pedals. Nowadays, I look at them and it's a bargain because I already know that I have invested a lot of money in my sim gear. So really try and keep that in mind. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not joking here. Like I'm telling you this as the truth. Like if someone would come up to me about a year and a half ago and say, Alex, do not buy the Club Sport Series because it will open up the possibilities to uh, like an unparalleled proportion of the money that you'll be willing to spend on gear. Uh, just, you know, get a G27 wheel and get the fuck out. Like, stop that. 
just enjoy your hobby. This is the maximum that you should spend. And if I would listen to that, I'll probably still be driving a G27 wheel and still have one monitor and a non-motion rig and whatnot. So, you know, things like that will affect your choices or may affect the choices. Your mileage may vary, but for me, it's important to, to give this kind of out there to just really think about spending what you spend. But once you are willing to spend, these are great value. That's it for me today. I'll see you guys on the next one.